Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name's Colleen Taylor in downtown Austin, Texas with David Hornick from August Capital. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thrilled to be here. And you are here at South by Southwest for many things probably, but you just kind of came off of this panel where you talked about attracting big name investors or, or personality investors. Well, maybe, I mean, it was called smart money, and so it depends on what you think is smart money. As far as I'm concerned, smart money is getting people to invest in your company who can actually be helpful, right? That And different people need different help. Sometimes you need introductions, sometimes you need uh, to raise money, sometimes you need coverage with the press, and so uh, finding the right investor for the right company, that's what we were talking about. Is there a commonly made mistake you think that happens here? You know, do, do people look for maybe the wrong thing or the wrong fit in an investor? Well, I think they don't look for a fit. I think that they look for money and they make the mistake of thinking that uh, that that venture investment is a fungible asset. Like anyone is any money is money, right? And that's just uh, you know. <laughs> I like it. Uh, no, I mean the the mistake that you make is not recognizing that uh, that actually it, there needs to be a fit that you should figure out who you have a good personality fit with because you know you could be working with that person for the next 10 years my partner Dave Marquardt has been on the Microsoft board for 31 years now if Bill Gates didn't like Dave he's had a miserable 31 years but they've become very good friends you can imagine right and I also want to ask you quickly about you know Vinod Kosla just a few days ago or maybe yesterday I think it was here at South by Southwest he said you know Entrepreneurs, you need to learn that your investors aren't your friends. And we talk about having friendships. I mean, do you disagree with him there? Do you think it's important to kind of be closer? Yeah, totally. I think that, in fact, if you are looking for someone to not be your friend, then I guess you should take that money, right? I mean, I actually am incredibly close with the uh, with the founders with whom I work, and uh, and and I get cr closer because we are engaged in something that's important that we that we care about that we collectively work on and so i think that sure there are times in which there will will be separate interests and people will go different ways but um, but even in those instances where a founder ends up leaving the company or we you know we have disagreement i still have remained very good friends with the people uh, that i've backed and it's because i believe in them and i believe in what they're building now you say that People should take a moment and really consider whether or not this is the right investor, even though so many startups, they just want money. Is there a tip or like, you know, do you say go take a walk around the block or sleep on it? Or is there some kind of rule of thumb that can, people can remember in that moment when they just need to take a step back? Well, some of it is just that this is like an, a high class problem. It's very hard to get two investors who are interested in funding you at the same time, right? So, you know, yeah, if you have more than one investor who is interested in investing in your company, recognize that that you now get to make the choice, right? It's not the investor who gets to make the choice. The investors are saying, look, choose me. I wanna, I wanna work with you. Step back, take the time you need to figure out who's gonna be the most useful, helpful, you know, pleasant person to, your, to work with over the next 10 years. That's what you should worry about. And, you know, and anyone who gives you a term sheet and says, this is a term sheet and it blows up in two days or whatever, you should say, look, that's not the kind of person I want to work with. Take your time, understand that you are in charge of your destiny. And you have such an eclectic background. I'm not sure how many people kind of realize about you, all the different, you know, I was reading about you studied computer music and you've studied criminology and you've gotten your law degree and all these things. Do you find that you kind of look for entrepreneurs when you're finding someone to invest with that you want someone with a different kind of path? It's a, a, what I find is that I want to inv invest in people who are passionate. My path truly, I mean, eclectic is the kind version, uh, but in every instance I was pursuing something that I thought was compelling and engaging and, and I pursued it 100%. And I, and I got lucky and I landed in venture capital, which is the greatest job for someone who is a little ADD, but very passionate about the things that he gets engaged in. I'm looking for entrepreneurs who, who take the same approach, who have come to what they're, you know, what they're building in some honest and interesting way. And sometimes that's because they're an expert in it. And that's amazing. You want experts, but sometimes it's just because they care a lot. They're deeply passionate about something and they learn everything there is to know about it. So, you know, I'm not looking for a particular path to being a great entrepreneur. I'm looking for passionate, engaged, uh, you know, fanatical people who are really, who really want to build something great. Cool. And let's get specific here. What are you seeing recently? What, you know, spaces are you really excited about right now? 
No, we, I don't. I look for entrepreneurs to tell me what's the exciting thing. I think that venture investors who think that they are going to figure out what the next great, uh, you know, space is, um, should go build it. <laughs> like if that, if I knew what that was, I'd go own 100% of that company and build the company. As an investor, I look to back people who are really smart and say, hey, listen, given everything we know in this world, here's where we think it's heading, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna build a company that makes sense in that context. So you know, when when the Splunk founders came to me, they pitched me on a business that was basically, look, it's very hard to debug systems. There are more and more log files. Wouldn't it be great to be able to take those log files and search, use a search engine to figure out what's going on in your systems. That made a ton of sense at the time and that ended up being this massive big data platform. There was no such thing as big data, so I couldn't have been excited about big data. I was excited about these three founders who were amazing entrepreneurs who had found a real problem. Are you seeing any more diversity now in entrepreneurs? There's been so much talk, especially recently, about how we need more women in higher ranks at companies and things. You know, Is this something that's becoming at all a reality? You've been at August for, what is it, 10, 12, 13 years now? Years. Yeah, so have you actually seen the landscape change? A little. I mean, I think this is a challenging process because the reality is, you, you know, look, I do think in many ways uh, the, the entrepreneur world, entrepreneurial world, allows people to make the most of what they have in front of them. But, you know, but I know that people have been beaten up in the past for saying like, oh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's certainly true, right? That if you look in the venture world, it's, it's a bunch of white men. There's a bunch of very tall white men. I'm an outlier. I'm the short man's, you know, short entrepreneur's VC. Uh, <laughs> It's hard, I can imagine, if you're if you're a woman, you're you know constantly pitching businesses to a bunch of men with a particular perspective. There aren't a lot of people of color. There are not a lot of gay venture investors. And as a result, I think it is a challenge. And I think that we should change that. I think that there should be more investors of color. There should be more diversity in the vent in the venture world. Um, but in the meantime, I think that in that uh, you know. Other investors need to be open to the idea that great entrepreneurs can come in in all sorts of uh, you know in all forms. Uh, and you know I, I I'm you know I think that it is a challenge because you can only invest in the things that come before you. And uh, so you know I'm very open to talking with lots and lots of different entrepreneurs, uh, and I'm hopeful that that it gets better over time. And last question here. As someone with a music background, we're here at South by Southwest. It is a music festival as well. What are you listening to these days? What are you <laughs> what are you digging? Have you do you have much time to kind of find new music? I have this terrible thing which is my son who was my source of 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 awesome indie music went to boarding school and it is I think it's incredibly inconsiderate of him because I go to all, you know these amazing shows and then he you know and then he, he went off to boarding school and I'm stuck go, you know sitting at home alone listening to old you know uh, uh you know my old Devo albums. Uh so um but I you know, there are amazing shows that are coming up here. In fact, I texted him and he was like, why aren't you staying? You know, you got to see Alt-J, you got to see whatever. And I'm, you know, so I'm a little disappointed that I can't, that he can't meet me here and actually say, we'll go to this. Right, right. You need his advice. But dad has to get back to work, so. That's right. <laughs> well, David Hornick, thank you so much for talking to us. It's a pleasure as always. Yeah, thank you so much.